Hello, I'm sitting here with Keith Lehrer of Six Dog. Uh, this is Sean McNerney from the Six Dog fan page. Um, I'm just going to go over uh, some recent events and uh, delve into the history of all that is Six Dog. Keith, uh, pleasure to meet you. Yes, uh, you too, you too. It's good to see you. Um, so, uh, tell me, uh, let me ask you a question. What was... I just, I, I just want to address something. This is the first time I'm on Six Dog fan page being interviewed. So it's got quite a momentous occasion. It is a momentous occasion. I can address everyone. Because uh, Keith is one of the, if not the, founding member of Six Dog. Come on. The founding member of uh, Six Dog. Um, Started the band with a keel, keel James, right? Yes, we both started. So uh, tell me how that, how that, uh, how that went down. Well, how that jive, you know? Me and Akil have been playing in bands since high school, you know, with one lineup or another, and um, it just went down the line. It was actually from the ashes of another band that me and Akil wanted to go in a different direction. We we're in a band called Scarred. Scarred, right? Okay. Yes. I remember that band. Yes, and, and we broke off. Right, so we broke off from that, and we wanted to go in a little heavier direction, so. Oh, very cool. So, um, let me ask you, Six Dog's been around for some time, like, what would you say, mid-90s, thereabouts? Late-90s, yeah, 90, 96, end of 96 is when we started. Right, you've had a lot of lineup changes. A lot, a lot, yes. Um, tell me, what, what, what was, why, uh, why did the 99 uh, lineup fall apart? The 99 lineup, that was our, probably our most popular lineup. That yeah. was me, um, Buddha Paul, Akil, and uh, Nick Shank, a.k.a. The Pup. Oh yeah, The Pup. Yes, The yeah, Infamous was, Pup. Yes, The Infamous Pup. I guess the uh, Vinnie Vincents of uh, Six yes. Dog, in a matter exactly. of Exactly. Uh, yeah, I heard some, uh, some stuff, you know, not too nice, but you know, we won't go into that. Nah, we, we don't need wanna, to go there today. We want to keep it positive on the yes. uh, Six Dog fan page. So, um, so what we're gonna what we're gonna say is um what do you think was like the most momentous show that you guys had? I know you guys played CBGBs, you played uh, shows where it got so crazy and raucous that the cops came in. Yeah, yes, yes, that was that was the infamous dog fest. But let me get back to the the '99 lineup and why that fell apart. All right. Well, you see what happened is. It, in, in Six Dog, that lineup, you had two camps. You had, you had Stormy Seas, kind of like we're having yes, just now. Yes, Didn't you say that, yes. Stormy Seas indeed. But you had two camps. You had Akil right. and the Pup, Shank, and you had me and Paul. Right. Akil was always leading to more more pop type stuff. Okay. You know, you wanted to keep it, you know, you didn't want to get too, too heavy. You wanted to stay light. Right. And Shank, he came from a folk background. He didn't, he didn't want to play rock. When, I, when we found him on the street, he was doing acoustic. Him, him, it was him and a guitar. He didn't know how to play electric guitar. Yeah, that could be problematic yes. when you're in a real rock and roll band. That's like, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know what the funny thing is, to tell you the truth, we've always been a, a blues band. Yeah. Essentially, we, we were a blues band. You know? I mean, you, may, you take, take out the heavy guitars, take out the drums, you got blues there, talking about, you know, real pain. Well, yeah. I can see yeah. I don't know if I'd go so far as right. to say that it's, it is <laughs> as a blues band. Yeah. Um, let's say like a, a Hooker and yeah, uh, right, right. You know, uh, Robert Johnson. Uh, right, yes, yes. The soul at the crossroads. Right. But I see the influences. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people do see that. And, yeah. and a, what a lot of the fans are asking me is what's going on now with the ball? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. We have a new lineup now. Um, it, you know, things have been in limbo for some time. And I mean, you know, the dog cycles, as we like to call our fans on the fan page. Um, you know, they get antsy. They want to see what's going on with the dog. I, I, I can definitely shows, understand. Venues, you know? I can definitely understand. You know? There's been a lot of problems. People have been wishy-washy. Um, just egos clashing and stuff. But now we're, what we got is almost like a super group happening. You know? I can't tell you all the details. But one person who's on board is Steve. Steve Yakowski, 
He was in Brick, many not numerous to, bands. Not to cut you off, but he is a veteran of the scene. A veteran of the scene, yes. Uh, you want to name some bands that he's been in? I mean, I know he was in Brick. I remember when I was a kid, we used to go to a place called Rock and Rex. Yes. Which was like, basically, I would say, the, almost the birthplace for that sort of vignette of the scene. Um, he gave a, you know, a, a venue for these bands, these high school bands when, when I was young that really wouldn't have had any other place to play or any outlet. And um, I remember uh, King Diamond's son uh, ran the place. <laughs> right, um, right. It was, it was, uh, it was really cool. Uh, I remember a band called Point. I think oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Steve was in that. And, he was in and that. Samir and uh, who else was in that? Uh, no, Boink, Boink was a different band. Boink was a band with him, uh, Squat Gentleman, oh, Craig, Squat and some other guy. And then he was unceremoniously uh, kicked out of that band. Right. And that's a touchy subject, so we won't get into that. We won't delve into that too, no. much, too much. But um, what we will say is that... Uh, now, tell me, what's the, what's the deal, man? I mean, um, you got James in there. He's yeah, you know, he, he's he's a, one thing about him, the kid's been true blue since the beginning. Yeah. He sleeps by the phone. You say six dog, he, he picks up. All right? One ring, first ring, he's saying, when are we practicing? Where? That's you know, how this conversation goes, where? And you tell him, and he hangs up the phone. He's gotta, right there. You gotta admire that kind of dedication. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, indeed. It's showing, man, because, I mean, he's been there, not from the beginning, but he came in and was kind of like a godsend. Not from the beginning, but you can be sure as fuck he'll be there at the end, you know? Right, That's what you gotta say. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's very good. I mean, you know, it's trying to, you know, you know, whatever with the oh yeah for the, the, the fan page, yeah the fan page, we'll, we'll bleep that out at some yes, point. Yeah, true, true. Some point, uh, yeah. be, uh, cut that uh, expert about you know, <laughs> yeah. for, for the younger fans among the the dog cycles. And um, all right, so uh, tell me if you will, just um, some of your like fond memories of being with Six Four. What what comes to mind, like the the excitement, the, uh, the, uh, the momentum, the, uh, the music. Yeah, just playing out. And with the, with the right, right guys writing some great songs. That's what it was all about. When everybody was on the same page, it, it couldn't be it couldn't be topped. It was, it was great times. Great music and everything. Now, some of the albums you guys released, we got American Monk. Right. Um, we got... Uh, we got American Monk and, and, and a host of live albums. And one album that's never been released, it was called uh, Boners and Bitches. That was around 2003, and since that lineup fell apart, it got shelved. Right. So we're hoping that we can finish that and get that released sometime this year. Right. On, on, on the heels of a, a reunion tour. You know, not, not a reunion, a comeback tour, because it's not really a, a reunion of any lineup per se, you know? Now just to touch on it, not to delve too deeply into it, but just for the sake of the fans. Um, there was some like commotion, there was like a, a misunderstanding. Um, Martin left the band. Yes. Um, any insight, any, 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 anything you'd like to add to Martin, that? Martin is, is, is a great guitarist, you know, he's, he's one of the best we had. I mean, he's the Wizard of Westchester, I mean, let's not get, a, get it wrong, I mean. And he was, he was a great songwriting partner with me. Him, he played the riffs, and I, could, I it was easy for me to find, uh, the melody to it. So he was a great partner, but you know he, he's got his own ideas, and you know it's it's hard sometimes. You know right. he's, he doesn't want certain people in the band. You know, so he couldn't work with them. So we had a little fallout there, but right. he's always welcome. He's always welcome back. Now, from what I understand, uh, from what I've seen on the threads, he may be doing his own thing. Yeah. Any possibility of? Six Four playing a show with uh, with with whatever band Martin's involved with or anything like that in the future, like maybe doing like a joint venture type thing. Sure, oh. sure, it's negotiable. And the door is open. Basically. It's negotiable, yeah. All right, well that's good. Um, all right, moving right along. Um, I guess what the fans really want to know is is what kind of equipment does Six Four prefer to use, like amplifiers, guitars. Yeah, yeah. That, we, we, we prefer to use that stuff. Mics and amplifiers. Brand names, you know, it doesn't really matter as long as it works and it's loud enough, you know? Now, there's a definite punk influence. Yeah. I mean, you guys have actually covered a lot of punk songs. 
Yes. Uh, coming from the Ramones. Um, care to shed any light on that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the good thing we in the beginning of Six Dog, we were trying to find our sound. You know, all our, we had all different influences. You know, and we saw that punk was where we wanted to go. But a lot of other members didn't want to go there. So when we started doing covers, Bodies in particular by Sex Pistols, that went over great with the audience, and and we really gelled on that. So we wanted to take the original music of Six Dog in that direction. So there you go. Very cool, very cool. All right, well, uh, this is Sean from the Six Rock Bandmates. I just spoke with Keith Lehrer, uh, lead vocalist and founding member of uh, Six Rock. Yes, a pleasure. Um, we're going to enjoy the rest of this boat ride. Uh, I'll cruise down the uh, East River. Maybe bump a few bodies along the way. We'll oh, yeah, for sure. Some we'll body, show. Six pistols, you know. Uh, girl, a young uh, Six Rock band yes, in the main. Yes, indeed. All right, this is uh, Sean McCurdy of uh, the Six Rock Band page signing out. Dog Cycles, keep it tuned here. We're going to have uh, more info and updates.